Do you feel that in a time when we are more connected than ever, we are drifting away from real human connections, especially to ourselves? I do. Hi, I'm Leticia Latino, and I want to invite you to join me and my very inspiring guests in exploring ways to reconnect to your essence, to your definite purpose, to what makes you tick. Are you ready? Hello, everybody, to a new episode of Back to Basics, Reconnecting to the Essence of You. We are fresh into the new season. And as I've been sharing with you in the past episode, I'm so happy with the lineup of guests that uh, we have. And so today... I have uh, Michael Rossi, and I don't know if I should add the Mateo because he usually goes by Michael Mateo Rossi, but he's a writer, producer, and director, LA based. Hello, Michael. How are you doing? Hi, so good to be here. Thank you. uh, Thank you for bringing me on. No, please. It's exciting. So, do you use the Mateo or not before we start? I absolutely always do. I always use Mateo. So, anybody that knows me, it's Michael Matteo Rossi. They I all love know it. it. It has a great yes. sound to it, so I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's got a nice ring, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So, thank Michael, you. thank you for being here in Back to Basics. You know, the purpose of this podcast is to inspire people to stay connected yes. with their true essence and how you caught my attention, believe it or not. People that listen to this podcast know that I'm a momager and I, and, you know, I have a nine year old that it's a little actor. But with that, I follow a lot of people in that industry and your tweets are one of the most inspirational tweets I read. You, you, you should be like a, a life coach <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get tired of film that directing. Thank you so much. No, it's, um, it's interesting kind of, kind of going off of that about a few years ago, I started to use Twitter a lot more regularly and I saw a lot of, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff on social media. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of problems going on in the world and my heart goes out to it. And I know that I just, I just started to use the platform in terms of kind of giving advice to, to colleagues, you know, positivity, just power of attraction, law of attraction, just really not giving up. And it just seemed like a lot of people enjoyed it. So I started to get a lot of retweets based on that. And then it just kind of picked up and I enjoyed it. And I was able to kind of engage with other people and some people even reaching out to me and, you know, if they had doubts, if they had anything. And I tried to give my two cents on my own experience with it and how to deal with it. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring you on. So to share with the listeners what uh, Michael uh, wrote, he was, he, he put this on Twitter. Some people know what their calling is early on and for other, it takes a long time. Either way, passion is passion manifested and vision the success and stay true to what you began in the first place. Mm-hmm. That is powerful. And that's why I wanted, I got curious and I say, I want to know how he got started into making movies. And you have a great career. And also, I know that a lot of people out there, they say, well, this is what I like, but I have to pay the bills. I keep saying this in my podcast and they don't go for it. So I think you're a fantastic guest for that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, you know, well, first of all, thank you so much. Yeah, that, that tweet was good, right? Muy, muy poderoso, sí. ¿eh? Oh, uh, y habla español. Hablo, hablo un poquito español. Mi, mi padre vivió en Guadalajara por dos años por escuela médico. Y, oh. uh, y sí, you know, hablo, hablo con mis amigos y otras personas. Y, sí. es, wow. es, es un idioma muy importante, especialmente aquí en Los Ángeles. But anyways. Yeah, uh, no, I love it. I, you know, I'm Venezuelan and, and I, I have not done an episode in Spanish. I have a lot of people that are upset about that. So I'm glad now officially, guys, I have an episode in there Spanish. You go, right? <laughs> there you go. Well, it's funny not to digress, but my last two films, the two films that I have in post right now, actually have a little bit of Spanish in it. Not too much, but there's a couple, we, we have a couple little bit in uh, in Spanish, which is cool. Awesome. Uh, no, and you really yeah. speak it quite well, I have to say. Oh, thank you. So, so just going back to it, I think that so much of it's balanced because of course we have to pay our bills. We have to survive. We, we have to do that. And how 
how are we able to follow our passion and also balance the fact that you might need a job that you might not be passionate about, but at least it gives you income. And I feel like it's all about managing time and resources. There's so many times where, you know, we feel lazy or we push things off or something like that, where even if it's depending, if you're an actor, you're a writer, you know, study some stuff, you know, write little short stories, even get a camera and shoot a little short skit, shoot something for your reel, you know, just kind of watch videos of other actors talking to get kind of inspired and see how they did it. I think all of those things are interesting. And of course, one of the most important things is networking, networking and, you know, surrounding yourself with like-minded creative individuals. You know, you say, I, I, I love using Twitter and Twitter, I have met, including you, so many great people, so many colleagues, so many that I've worked with. And I think that's so important. I totally agree. And it's uh, you started this saying that uh, a lot of people take the social media as negative. And I think they block, you know, everything, the good and the bad. And, and we right. agree that, yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff. And uh, but there's a lot of good stuff that comes out yes. of it. And some people just rule it out altogether. Yes. Yes. So tell me about you, the young you. Were, were you as a child, did you have this vision clear in your mind of what you wanted to do or how did it develop? Well, it's interesting because when I was a, a preteen and in my early teens, I actually did theater. So I was in front. I was, I was a performer. I was in um, Fiddler on the Roof. I was in Bugsy Malone. I was in Annie. I was in a lot of, a lot of those plays. And I loved it. But when I was 15 or 16, I started to get into writing more, writing stories, creative writing. And I loved it. I loved telling stories. I loved creating stories even more than I did performing. So when I was 19, when I was in San Diego State, I made my first short film. And I loved the experience so much that something told me, I want to be a writer and director. And I've never looked back. So I've been doing, I've been doing films since late 2006. So that's uh, yeah, you have a long career. Yeah, I saw your list of films, and of course, I want to know about the the new and upcoming. But you have a long list, and some of them have been, you know, have won awards. Yes. So, yes. so how's that? Was it very hard at the beginning? Did you have to do a little bit of everything, as everybody says? Of course, yeah, no, it's um it's building a team, it's wearing many hats. I had to obviously produce my own films, you know, I have to get everybody together, have to do everything like that and um and it's not easy. When you have a right team that believes in your work or believes in your script, it makes things easier, but it no, it was a lot of work and it still is a lot of work. When when I transitioned from short films to feature films, I spent six months of hell trying to develop my first feature film. I lost money. I got screwed out of stuff. I, you know, the whole bit. And then I kind of took a step back and I really tried to, to think, okay, what can I tackle in the most simple terms? And thankfully it worked out well, but no, I mean, you go through so much and so much stress, but I love it. I love it. You know? And I believe it is. I mean, your the conviction and the passion for what you do is uh, really tangible. And 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 you also, I know that uh, in some of the messaging you're being, and you just mentioned like, where of people that bring you down, right? That you say, don't get brought down by the hate, the hate, yeah. right? Yeah. And in yeah. your industry, more than in anything, I mean, in my, I'm in telecommunications and sales, and and you meet all kind of people, but in your industry, I can. Imagine how people, you know, uh, there's seems to be jealousy and a lot of that, the egos of the people get in the way. It's crazy. And, and it really is something that, you know, social media can be a blessing and a curse. The Internet can be a blessing and a curse because it gives the opportunity for people to exploit it, people to take advantage, people to create hundreds of fake profiles and try to troll you or 
or mess with you or may, I mean, again, we've seen the worst thing where people have commit suicide over online bullying and harassment. And it's the worst thing ever for these people, most of whom who have no lives, they're not happy themselves, will hide behind a computer and say some of the most awful things to try to bring somebody down. You almost have to feel sad for them where it's like, this is what you want to waste your time doing. You don't want to do something productive. You don't want to, you know, and, and thankfully I haven't gotten so much of that, but you know, again, jealousy, the more you go up, the more love you get, but then you get a couple things where these people, it's either jealousy, envy, you know, they, they want to be where you are, um, whatever it may be. And I just, you just got to ignore it. You just got to ignore it. I mean, there's no kind of re some people try to tackle it or try to do it, but I think it's better to just ignore it, you know, and, and for your own mental sanity, because you don't want to, you, you'll drive yourself nuts if you nitpick or if you look at every little thing, you just, you know, your worth, you know, the quality, you know, that a lot of people like your stuff and that's, what's important. And I think that's really what makes the difference between the make it or break it. Like I sense, of course, you are making it. You already have several movies and all that. But but you can sense that your conviction is so strong and you, it, that that I, I don't doubt that you're going to get whatever it is that you want to get, because that's really what pe what help people get pulled back is when they don't trust themselves and when they yes. are not convinced of their value and they don't act also because I think it's very important that you also believe your Kool-Aid, right? That you drink it yes. in, a, in, a, in a healthy way, so yes. to speak, so that no, you make I, things happen. I completely agree. I think that some people get too in their head or they're hearing other people and they're saying, ah, don't do it. You're never going to make it. You're never going to do anything like that. And that negative energy then breeds into you and it makes you doubt yourself. And the minute that you doubt yourself in a big way like that, you are going to want to give up and you can't do that. Push that negative energy out. Tell yourself you're going to make it. Throw that into the universe. Throw that positivity in there. Envision yourself doing it and making it. And that's a lot of a better approach than just doubting yourself all the time. Oh, well, that, we can end the interview here because it's perfect. That's exactly what I look for in an interview. <laughs> I mean, that inspiration of that reminder. Thank you. So tell us about your, your upcoming movies, because I want people that listen to the podcast to, I know you have two movies in post-production right now. Yes. Yes. And this is, again, I think I tweeted about this. This is the first time I've ever had two feature films in post right now. I usually do it one at a time. My first one in post was Shadows that we shot late last year. Um, it's a really nice kind of suspense thriller uh, action film. And that's in post. That that has a lot of great people in it. If people want to look them up, uh, Krista Allen, Rahart Adams, uh, Eric wow. Atipo, Francis Capra. We we have a lot. David Labrava from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a lot of people in it. So that's great. And then the the one that I just shot last month or early this month, The Handler, is a mm -hmm. pure action film, kind of popcorn and Joyce kickback, <laughs> and just enjoy the action um, film that is in post right now, too. We're just starting the edit there. So I have both of those. So I think that they, they're going to be two of my best films. And um, with Shadows, I'm already talking to distributors right now, narrowing that down with with the handler because I just did it. You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be editing that for a little bit. But based on the footage and based on what I see, we've shot. I feel very good about it. Yeah, no, I saw some of the snippets that you have online and they look yeah. really good and they're gonna be on the show notes for anybody that wants to check it out and, yes. and, and see it. And, uh, you know, it's just exciting things. With most guests, I feel that, you know, the journey to get to their passion, you know, it's longer and we have a lot to talk about. It's like, oh, well, yeah, he said everything. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. You are, you are pursuing your dreams. Thank you. Thank you. But I'll say this, you know, I still, I'm very ambitious. I look at, okay, what's the next film I'm going to do? You know, I, I want to keep going. I see 
I see so much more that I want to accomplish as well. I mean, there's so many things I want to do. And I'll also say with The Handler, real quick, um, that was one of the best filming experiences ever that I've had. And the irony is, you know, we're in the middle of, of this pandemic and, and it was still, it was a fantastic experience. And I want to give a shout out to, to just real quick to... No, 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 we have time. You are the yeah. busy man, not me. <laughs> uh, okay. um, I want to give a shout out to John, my cinematographer, Chris Levine, the, the, uh, the lead actor who is amazing. Uh, Matt Erdems, the stunt stunt person, Rachel, Michael Passion, Adam Carbone. They, the, these people are my brothers and sisters. You know, they are, I've worked with most of them before and they're amazing. And I love working with them and they're great, positive people. That's great. It's, uh, that's something I think that uh, at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned surround yourself with like-minded people. I think that goes a long way, no matter what it is that you do. If you surround yourself with the right crew next yes. to you that pull you up, not that push you down. Yes. It, it makes a big, big difference. I estoy de acuerdo. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, some things are just, you know, like almost common sense, but yeah. there's something there. And I think, again, it goes about to self-validation, self-worth, all these things that, that we need that sometimes push you and, and get us in environments that are not not good for us. Yes. No. And, and you know, I've been on some sets where it's just that negative energy. People are miserable, all of that. And it's just, it's draining. P like being on set should be fun. We're, we're here to create a story, but we're here to have fun too. It's not just quote unquote work. We're supposed to enjoy it. I mean, this is the, this is the dessert, you know, this is the, the, the stuff to savor. And I just want to be around people who love what they do. Yeah, I, I imagine it's very, very challenging. Uh, I think there's some industries where in, in your industry, like people is also like the commodity. Like there's so many people that want to do it yes. that I think people that are in that industry almost disregard that those people are human beings. You cool. know, when you get rejected, when you get this, when you get that, you, you, these are people that want to be maybe where you were or where other people were. And mm -hmm. I mean, I speak for, and again, it's a very little boy and all that, but sometimes it's like, you know, being kind, it, it can go a long way. And I it think there's industry. Yeah. That, 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 so it's a rough industry. I, I, I have high respect for you. <laughs> it, it is. And you have to have thick skin and, and, and what I would tell your, uh, Your, your boy is, you know, just keep with it. If he loves what he does or he enjoys it, it's tough. It's tough. Look, I've pitched scripts before. I've pitched my projects. They've been passed on. It always sucks. It sucks hearing that. But you just keep going because you still enjoy it because you know that it's going to be worth it. You know it's going to be worth it. And um, that's just, that's my philosophy. And, and you know, I've been doing it For a decent amount of time, I've been doing it for over 13 years. And there have been the highs and the lows, but I would say that the highs outweigh the lows for sure. Great. No, that's great advice. Luckily, my boy is nine, so he's at a stage where he enjoys it, but he don't cares too much about the result. Right. And that and is the ideal stage. Right. Yes. No, and that's the ideal stage because he goes to a casting. Did I get a no? Okay. <laughs> and, right. You know, I'll do better next time. But he's not, his ego is not into play. I think exactly. that's the problem. When the ego gets into play, and I'm sure when he's older, if he wants to keep doing it, then that's an issue. But at this stage, it's not. But I right. see other, you know, because when you're in that environment, you see what goes around you. Of course. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it, it's tough. So to end, I want to ask in the, in your lows, you just say you have your high, you have your lows. Yes. Where do you go or what do you do? You, you have something that really replenishes and re-energizes you and reminds you of your true essence. Yes. I, um, I love taking just walks and hikes and just kind of, kind of just, you know, finding peace that way, just taking a breather, just really, you know, just being out in nature and, and just, just clearing my head, clearing my head that way. I'm close with my brother too. You know, we'll, uh, we'll sometimes play soccer 
or even chess, just random things like that. But, um, and a lot of my close friends mean a lot to me, but I just, um, you know, talking to people, just even talking and venting helps too. But I think sometimes just taking a walk by myself, taking a little hike by myself really helps me just clear things, clear my mind. That's great. Well, I mean, this has been very enjoyable. Uh, I definitely, for anybody that likes positive, uh, in, you know, inspiration, follow Michael Mateo on Twitter. He, I'm telling you, you are almost like my mindfulness. During <laughs> this COVID thing, I, I did a, a mindfulness oh, meditation. And so I started following people with positive messaging. And, uh, and so it's always refreshing. And when you go like across industry and people that you, I would never bump probably into you if I wasn't right. following o o other things for my son. But it's just refreshing because you realize we have a lot in common as human beings. No, and this was great as well. And I really appreciate it. This was a nice time. And I'll, I'll leave you with this too. One of the best compliments, I've gotten a few compliments like this. Uh, from other people on Twitter, either messaging me or, or just tweeting at me saying they literally like wake up and are looking forward to what my tweet is going to be the following day and that they needed it and it helped so much. That, that just, that's food for the soul for me. That means so much to me, honestly. That's great. And it should. And it's something uh, as an observer and someone that got to you that way is something that you should nurture because you do have a special a special touch in what you say that reaches people. So I think it's great that you are continuing to do it and you put that message out there. No, I really appreciate it. And thank you. And and hopefully your your listeners, when this is out, got something from this. But just don't give up. Just do what you love and just follow what you're passionate about. Thank you so much. And we're definitely going to have anybody listening out there uh, on the show notes. Uh, there will be the links uh, for Michael's movies. Give it a, it's on IMDb. Give it a star rating, 10 stars if you can. And so let's help someone that is already successful get even more successful. So the best of luck to you. Thank really. you so much and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And until the next time. <laughs>